Hey everybody, welcome to Rebel Junk. My name is Erin. Today's unloved and unwanted junk comes to us from a very small haul. Real quick before we get into this, I just wanted to mention about 30% of my viewers have not subscribed to the channel. If you enjoy reseller content, so information about items that are selling on multiple platforms, a few instructional videos, and some thrifting hauls at garage sales, thrift stores, auctions, and some estate, estate sales, please consider subscribing below. Let's get into some of those items. So I've been saving this bag. I haven't photographed it and listed because I'm set it aside to do a video so let me show you guys now what I picked up this was new in box pampered chef eat drink and be merry oh it's a cheese board so I think that's made out of bamboo and I paid five dollars from a Vera Bradley new with tags slipper pouch and I paid four dollars Vera Bradley eye eyeglasses case so that would have been a dollar and with the wallet okay so golden girls chia pets <laughs> these were each three dollars and I did get Sophia and Rose Floating holly berry candles that I paid three dollars. This holographic rose gold wallet was a dollar. Two Tupperware frozen Olaf containers for a dollar. Here one amber musk color candle. No price tag, so my guess is she probably gave it to me for a dollar. But these had been my daughter's size. I imagine she would have kept them. So they look like they have never been worn. So these are Sperry's with the glitter pink leopard print. A size three. Another wallet for one dollar. It does say that it's leather. However, it is not branded. No name brand on there, but in good shape. And it is leather. Shears support one dollar. Tonka track hallmark ornament for two dollars. Scent sickles. <laughs> They're the little pine scented sticks. I guess if you have an artificial tree, you can still have the smell of a real one. Nexa weather station. I paid five dollars for that. Cuddle the double layer lounge socks with the um, non-slip grip on the bottom with the tag still on it. So socks at my Goodwill are only a dollar. So she had those in the socks category. This looked to me like a little Mexican pottery piece. It's got a marking down there and I paid two dollars for that. Super cute. Looks like a little quail but it's got this really pretty butterfly on the front of it. This little purse uh, says Steve Madden on the back of it and I don't know it just I liked the look of it. And I like the shells on the front. It just look it looks very well made. I don't know if it's real leather and I'm not familiar with that name brand. So I'll have to look that up somewhere. Purses at my Goodwill are always four dollars. So that's what that would have been. I grabbed an owl with bright yellow eyes. It almost I thought maybe it was marble. I'm not sure. It's got a few chips and dings in it, but it was one dollar. Another wallet. This one's Buxton. It is leather. It needs a little bit of cleaning. This is really cute. It's from Hallmark and it's called Brown Paws. Thanksgiving. It's a little story about the bear in this canoe. It does still have the original price tag on it too. So just thought that was really cute. Oh, stuffed animals are a dollar, so that would have been one dollar. Up next was these um, Spode brand Christmas napkins. So these match the print that they have on a lot of their dishes. I do have some of their dishes, so I think I'm gonna lot it up with those plates, but that was only a dollar. Oh, I grabbed that for my husband. Hey Tim, if you're watching, that's for you. <laughs> I try not to sell clothes, but I couldn't pass these two up. These pants, and if you know anything about them, I would love to know more. So these are from Sanctuary Clothing. It says $119. Full on cargo pants. I don't know why these pants cost that much. They do have their original tags on them. It's a size large. And the fabric is Lyocell. I don't know what that is, but they're cute. And then the very last thing was this jacket. And it is from Nygaard. And it's a size... 10, 12. It looks like a petite, although it doesn't say. Oh yeah, it does. It says petites on it. So it's this sort of coppery bronze colored leather like fabric and it's just really well made. It has a nice elastic stretch fabric across the back and the sleeves. It looks like it would be comfortable. So jackets are seven. So that would have been seven. The pants I think would have been four or five dollars. Okay, I made it guys. Okay, so I have a few items to ship out today. These items that I'm going to show you today are small to just over bigger than a shoebox size. Finding boxes and bags and what kind of bubbles you need to pack them and to fill the space in the boxes is important to learn. It's one of those things that the more often you do it, the better you get at it and the more you learn and figure things out. So my options for shipping, if I can ship something USPS priority mail, I will 
because their products are free to ship in. So the boxes, the bags, the envelopes, all those things, they give to you free when you pay for priority mail shipping. The box that I'm showing you here today is actually for the ice cream cones that are over to my right. Those are in a very flimsy box and they are vintage glow mold string lights. So I want to make sure that I get them in a sturdy box. The USPS large mailing box that is not for flat rate shipping is the one that you see here. What I'm doing is I need the box to be longer and thinner than what it is. So I'm moving the fold lines over about two Two inches. The way I do that is with the end of a box cutter that has a perforating tool on it and I did get mine from Garage Flips Slani. What I did was those two lines I made move the box over two inches and in order to use that line I now have to fold the box along there. So I'm pushing my hand underneath it right along that line and using the my top hand to fold over my finger that's underneath of there. It didn't fold exactly straight but that's fine. It'll be okay. I really put way too much effort into that. It would have been just fine if I had uh, left that little fold off center a little bit. So here's the other one. And you'll see then, after I fold this one down, how the box shifts just a little bit to make it longer and thinner. And it ends up being just about a perfect fit for this ice cream cone box. There's going to be a little bit of void fill that I need to put in there. But overall, it was a good fit. So after you fold the long the lines along there you just want to give them a good crease so you're going to see me lay it flat and make those creases there so my measurements weren't quite exact but it really doesn't affect the box at all it ends up working out just fine after that you're going to need to take the box cutter end cut open the folds along the flap so the flaps that you would normally fold in you're going to have to make a new cut line so that can fold down in the direction that you want it to go because it's now on a corner you're going to do that with all of the corners that were folded so that's all two of them <laughs> so the two corners that have now been folded need to be split open but you'll have to do it on the top and the bottom so i guess that is four so you'll see me fold down and tape up the bottom Luckily the flaps still overlap each other so I don't have to add any material across the bottom. I'm just going to tape those down. I did, I, you'll see, I used some extra tape especially where there's that gap in the original, in the original edge of the flap. There's just like, I don't know, about a quarter inch gap that they have there that makes it easier to fold the box when you put it together the correct way. So you can see now that the box is more rectangular than a square. They originally are 12 by 12 by 8 so that started out as a square. We moved it into a rectangle by taking two inches off of one side and adding them to the other. <laughs> Crossing my fingers that the ice cream cones are going to fit in there because I didn't check it before I taped it up. And I didn't exactly measure. I really guessed on this one. And ta-da! It fits. Super happy about that. I eyeballed it a bit. I, I didn't uh, just start drawing lines and cutting. I did use, I laid the box of ice cream cones onto the box of the, when it, of the priority mail when it was still flat so I could see about how far over I needed to move it. If you ever have that situation where your box fits in one direction but not the other, this is one option, you know, if there's enough space left over. So I'm going to line this with bubble wrap and actually I'll probably speed this up because I lined it and then I unlined it and I had too much and then I put some on the top and some on the bottom and it just filled that little bit of extra space with big bubbles in there. So this being a product that really isn't going to be damaged unless they just completely smash the box and th these large priority mailboxes again are a little bit sturdier than some of their other boxes so I just padded it a little bit so it wasn't jostling around on the inside basically. In the end I end up with one layer of large bubbles all the way around and it looks like I went ahead and taped the box shut before I showed you how I did the bubble wrap. I must have turned the camera off and forgot about it. Either way, just to let you know, you can shift size and shape of a box if it fits in one direction but not the other. I still have 10 by 6. Worked out really well. I know there's a viral video somewhere that explains exactly how to do this. Hopefully my explanation works as well. So I did use some extra tape to cover up those gaps. You can see the, you know, the flaps didn't exactly line up but it's still a sturdy box and it's still the right shape and the, the ice cream cones still fit in there. I was pretty excited about that one. Okay now we're going to package two very small items. So I think that larger cat that you see there was about two inches long maybe two and a half. This box is five by four by four. I had put in an order for four by four by fours but the 
company that I ordered from sent me the wrong boxes. But honestly, these 5x4x4s, the 5x4x4s have worked out really well for most things that I have. Having a little bit of trouble with that tape dispenser there. So I did use my eBay coupon for this quarter and order the eBay tape because a lot of times I'm using recycled packaging and I want people to see that this is their order from eBay. So one sheet of bubble wrap for one cat. I'm gonna roll it up really well and I think it took me two tries to get the bubbles just the way I wanted them to make a good fit in the box. Let's see, nope, maybe I'm gonna stick with this one. But yeah, these are, these are metal cats so they're not gonna crush or shatter. They just need to be padded and, you know, undented by the time they get there. We need to fill the extra space in the box. So that extra bubble wrap around the cats takes care of most of that. I do tend to keep the backing off of my label sheets to crumple up and put in there. They're thicker than, you know, just regular computer paper. Oh, I'm writing a note. I, you know, sometimes I remember those and most of the time I really don't. I don't know how to make myself remember those. <laughs> So anyhow, so this, I'm rem remembering this time to write a note to the customer. It will just say, thank you for your purchase. I hope you enjoy this and stick it in there. So even if those get jostled around a little bit with that bubble wrap all the way around them, they'll be fine. But these little boxes definitely come in handy. They're inexpensive. I think they work out to just pennies a box. Excuse me, I also keep on hand six by six by six, but I sell a lot of small miniature doodads, knickknacks, tchotchkes. So I went ahead and grabbed my scale out. I wrote cats on the box, yep, and seven ounces so that when I go to print the labels, I know what's in there and how much it weighs and that's all ready to go. So I'm gonna continue on. Let's see, what are we gonna wrap next? Yeah, so the turtles, it's gonna be the same process for these turtles, so I'll just speed that up. The one is stone and the other one is driftwood. So these are pretty much, you know, the same process as those little metal cats that we just saw. Okay, so the notepad was sitting right beside me. Still forgot to put the note in. <laughs> so again, I weigh them, make myself a note about what's in there and how many ounces it is. And up next. So up next, we have a Port Marion ceramic dish. I need to make sure that this plate arrives in one piece. Anything that I've ever had that shipped that broke through USPS was ceramic. Well, with one exception, there was a glass dish. We wanted to get there in one piece. I did set all of these dishes to ship priority mail so I could use their one box that's a really good size for these. It's got enough room for all of the bubbles that I'm going to wrap it in and it's sturdy. Okay, Port Marion dish. If you see on the inside of my tape there, it says 10, 24, 20. I was just checking to see how long it would take me to go through a roll of tape. I think I run out at the end of this video. Okay, we are going to use the small mailing box. Again, not a flat rate shipper. This is just a small box. I'm testing it to see is there room for bubbles. So this plate I'm going to wrap in small bubbles and then big bubbles and I think that's going to fill this box. I don't think I'm going to have any void space. Looks like we're going to need two to three sheets of large bubbles. I'm checking it out. Looks like we're going with two. So we're going to wrap that in the opposite direction. So the, the other edges are covered. Wrap it around, tape it in, fit it in the box, tape it up, and it'll be on its way. If I'm remembering correctly, this was just barely a good fit. Um, usually if I remember, I have some styrofoam pouches that I put the dishes in. I must have forgotten this time. Well, we're going to weigh that one. This is one of the uh, items that's going to need weight before I ship it. So I end up putting it in there diagonally, which is fine because it's sitting on the large bubbles. Actually, several layers of the large bubbles. And once again, we forgot to stick a note in there. Okay, so this little wooden bear, um, I think he's about six inches tall. So he's semi-fragile. He's a thinner wood. So we're definitely going to need small bubbles and large bubbles. See which box we go with. I, I'm guessing this one is shipping first class under a pound. The very lightweight wood. Okay, so this box is going to fit all the way around. However, it's going to be too tall and you'll see how I cut down the 
sides to fit. So I'm prepping the box, get the bottom ready, put our branded eBay tape on there. So when I put that first layer of tape on, I do offset it a little bit. By the time I put the eBay tape on, it's got a nice wide area where it's been taped down. You know, with this bear being so light, it's really not a big concern to have that extra tape on there. I'll put a link to my last order of tape below. It's not an affiliate link, just so you know what I'm using, what I paid. I'll do the same though with the big bubbles when I get to them that I did on the plate. Where we wrap those in the opposite direction. Let's see, we're going with two. So these sheets of bubbles that I'm using are 12 by 12. They're, you know what, I'll link those down below too. You can see where I'm ordering some of it on eBay and some of it on Amazon. Okay, so now I'm going to take the box cutter and cut down the corners so if you have better box knife skills than I do you may have a nicer looking box. Yeah we folded one down in. Okay so we did tuck that one down in. We are going to fold this one over. So this one yeah we're going to cut this one down just so it you know folds over about halfway. The tall one that's left it's going to go down and over. This is the shoe box by the way so if you order the free USPS priority mail products you use to ship with your items that you've paid priority mail prices on this is the shoe box. Poshmark you can use priority mail supply so I actually could have used one of those Tyvek type envelopes to ship this bag. So the poly mailers I purchased off of Mercari. I will link those below. Okay, so we do have a moisture protection bag that we're going to put on these vintage Valentines. It is an open package. The customer does know that those are open. However, I also listed in the description that I would be sending the original packaging. So put the box together. I just, you know, I feel good about what I'm doing, taking a little bit extra time to use up some recycled packaging, reused packaging. All right, we're going to line the box to protect those corners. That's my biggest concern with this one. So this envelope I'm getting ready to ship here was one of my $150 sales from last week. I have to make sure this gets there in the exact same condition it was photographed in. These cardboard pieces are bigger than the envelope, which is perfect. It covers the corners. I'm being very careful to make sure that all of the tape is touching the cardboard outside so that if the item in the center moves around it won't get stuck on that tape. So these boxes have some adhesive on the end of them. I highly recommend you throw some tape on top of that. See it's too long. Here comes the extra bubble wrap. Okay so we put together the next box and it looks like it's going to go together and there's where it starts to come apart. And get that all taped up and secured. All right that is the end of this shopping and shipping episode. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've learned something. There's something that you can take with you of value and put to use. I appreciate you watching as always. Take care until next time.